in terms of, I've, I've used Spanin here as an example, because I think he sums this up really well. Um, Fanon actually interviewed um, 50 white men. Um, this was back in the 60s. Um, and kind of asked for characteristics of black men. And they said that black men represented strength, yeah, athletic, yeah, especially with the boxing, yeah. Um, oh, there's no jewels in here. The penis, yeah. Um, <laughs> animal, <laughs> devil, savage, and sin, okay. Now, for me, this is very interesting because, um, especially when you look at sociology books and what they have to say, it always tends to be around the black criminal other. Yeah? Um, and I would like you to remember this kind of typology, because even when we're talking about hip-hop, yeah, I could look at that typology, look at hip -hop, certain hip-hop videos, and think, hmm, I wonder how much has actually changed. Yeah, when we actually look at the visual imagery of some hip hop artists. Um, so in terms of this black criminal other, and in terms of masculinity, it's not just about Brennan's four phases of masculinity. We have to contend with this as well. Yeah? This has to impact the masculinity that develops yeah, from black men. Um, and obviously I've got uh, you know, three men that you might know, or three boys you might know down here. Okay. So you've got Emmett Till, yeah? Whistled at a white woman, or cued of whistling at a white woman, and got beaten up and killed, and I would never even show you the picture of what he looked like. But it still makes me nearly terrified to even look at it. America, okay? Um, we've got Trayvon Martin, yeah? Just wore hoodie. So you must be a black woman, and I'll shoot you. And that's still kind of ongoing at the moment, it's not even a closed <coughs> case, which is terrible. And then we have Mark Duggan, yeah? And we all know about that. Um, and obviously that kind of led to the, um, to the riots in 2011. Um, however, it's even questioned, how much do we even still know? <coughs> so was it the case that again, oh well, the blacks started it, so the blacks are still the criminal other, rather than actually thinking, why was there so much anger in the first place? Yeah? What are the underlying social systems that are happening to make young people feel so angry? We still, I haven't heard anyone still have this debate yet. Yeah, I saw debates on BBC Three, but actually with people that matter, yeah, who create the policies. Yeah? Um, and then there's the criminalisation of Mark Duggan anyway. Oh, well, he's a criminal anyway. Yeah? So this feeds in to black, black masculinity, it's something um, that is going to be quite significant when I speak um, about white masculinity. <coughs> um, so as I said, even though I know there's different genres of um, hip hop, um, the one thing I kind of wanted to focus on was the kind of thug gangster rap mentality. Um, and we've got Kit Warner, who um, actually wrote about what, um, why do um, white kids love hip hop, and he also wrote um, a book, the rap on gangster rap as well. Okay, um, and this is how he defines kind of um, thug gangster rap. Yeah, it consists of crime, drugs, um, guns, um, sexual exploitation of women, irresponsible parenthood, black on black homicide, gang life, and extreme materialism. Okay, um, and this is put out through the songs and also visually through the videos. Um, now. There's a debate in terms of um, how people interpret thug and gangster rap. Some people say at the end of the day, look, this is just um, an interpretation of what's happened on the street. So what else do you want me to talk about? Yeah? Um, whereas others would actually argue, maybe what's happened is there's been an internalization of those negative stereotypes that black men are really given by birth as the criminal other. You've actually internalized this, yeah? Um, and taking it kind of into your masculine identity, yeah? So that in a sense, what you create is a self-filling prophecy, self-filling prophecy, yeah? Where you actually believe um, the kind of negative image that you see and then actually put it out there, okay? So some feel like that. Um, and others feel like there is um, this sense of a, a comp compensation, kind of hyper-masculinity, yeah? 
And this gets linked to the theory that if black men maybe have no power in the workplace, etc., they have to find other avenues to feel like they have power. Yeah? So they have to look for other strategies to feel like they have power on the street. Yeah? And that could be represented by um, drugs and getting a lot of money and showing that you've got a lot and then running out and getting the clothes and the cars, etc. Yeah, it's a sense of power. Um, it may be also with the gun and power as well. Okay? So, I mean, this, to be honest with you, is a kind of a, a little lecture in itself, to be honest with you. Yeah? Um, so, we're caught in a very interesting position where black hip hop masculinity, on one hand, is a challenge to the norm. Yeah? And when I say the norm, kind of just what is normal in society? Yeah? Black hip hop masculinity presents a challenge. An alternative viewpoint, an alternative way of life that they're providing to everybody. However, at the same time, it still embraces those white masculine ideas in terms of being tough. Yeah, strength, power, etc. Yeah? So we get a hyper masculine um, masculinity. So, how does this have um, any kind of um, not kind of effect with white masculinities? So I've just put uh, a few people up here. So you've got Biggie, Tupac, um, you've got Redman, Method Man, Flavor of Flav, Q-Tip, Ludacris, Dougie Fresh, Akeev, yeah, um, Dr. Dre. Yeah, so a few people up here. Yeah, represents the hip hop masculinity. And I think, um, especially with um, Tupac and Biggie. That just got so much media attention anyway. I suppose because it was so important to the black hip hop community, um, it got so much global media attention anyway. Yeah, and still then we kind of have this. We're going back to this idea that black people don't like each other, and we're killing each other. Yeah, and it's even gone across the country as well. Okay, so for some it was in the interest of hip hop that they may be reported it, but for others we're confirming the stereotype about the black criminal world all over again. Okay. So, how does this relate to, um, to kind of white masculinity or the white attraction to hip hop? Um, I've used a, a quote from, from Horrocks. Um, Black male has clearly become an important spectacle for white audiences, partly as an image of brutal strength and masculine prowess, um, but also as an erotic um, object portrayed in a rather animal like manner. It's up to you whether you want to believe that um, definition or not. But I thought it was very interesting um, because part of what I'm going to be speaking about as well is kind of this kind of um, a, a love kind of hate dichotomy. This kind of seems a little bit positive, but also a bit negative as well when we come to that animal like. Yeah? Um, but it's kind of admiring as well. Okay, so just in terms of a, a little breakdown. Um, why attraction to um, hip hop? Um, we started in the 1970s, where rap started getting a little bit more mainstream. Yeah, um, and we had the Sugar Hill Gang, yeah, which um, rappers delight, which became very mainstream. And we had Rap Trent, Blondie, and we had Bundy MC and Aerosmith.